Hi, this is a quick presentation to show how I've been um, modelling some of the rights in um, Ireland, that's the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, um, and this is part of a larger suite of notebooks that actually go through a whole proof of concept approach um, to actually show how digital registration, automated registration, a standards based LADM style manner um, can be determined. Uh, and so part of that is to kind of define and agree key terminology and concepts so you can clarify the legislative need and explicitly ground that in data, uh, which is a, a key task. <coughs> Excuse me. And then demonstrate how a data driven standards approach to, to land registration would actually work. Show a system that encompasses all of the key transactional and operational features. So looking at this kind of transfer of party, alienation of right, variation of land, how you deal with disputes, for example, how you do first registrations. So you can start to get a, a broad consensual agreement between kind of concepts and approaches and ways forward. And that uh, you know, automated approaching to registration you know, uh, could be feasible or showing how it can be feasible, but also showing the costs that you'd need to get through in order to get there. You know, all your data needs to be digital, for example. You might need to go through some piece of legislation reform. What about the trust that's built in there? You know, how do you deal with you know, party uh, identification, for example? Uh, and exposing some of the key assumptions used in creating the, the, the proof of concept. So the point here is to start to get challenge at an early stage so you can drive out issues before you started to kind of embed them within your coding or development process. So it kind of feeds into that whole agile uh, approach to um, product development. And through this you're looking at gap analysis and trying to determine pragmatic and deliverable roadmaps. Uh, with got this kind of um, dummy uh, country code called land registration concepts LRC clearly uh, we'd use ISO 3166 country code for any of the LOD and country profiles but we're basing this upon the jurisdiction of, of Ireland and this is going back to the original 1707 uh, legislation when uh, you know all of Ireland was uh, one uh, jurisdiction Okay, and to go into a bit about background, 77, you had the Registration of Deeds Act, which was a you know, deeds-based system. And just for, for links here, every statement about uh, the, the legislation here, and when it's referred to in any of the future slides, cross-references through to um, the actual online legislative framework as well. So we've got our registries of Deeds uh, elements at TED, um, and likewise here, the Conveyancing Acts of 1881, and uh, 1892 so you can actually see the legislation where it's pulled out in specific parts it's linking through to those specific elements too so you know you had your initial register of deeds act from 1707 then in 1881 82 and 92 you start to get to a title based uh, legislation system uh, and that title is then guaranteed by the state and then uh, when you saw the uh, Government of Ireland Act in 1920 that saw the bifurcation between the land registration component in ERA and the land registration component of Northern Ireland, each of which then as separate jurisdictions created their own legislation. Um, so we're using this proof of concept to show a real property registration system and as part of that is describing what do we mean by property. In this instance we're talking about land, real property, immovable property, all those different synonyms for it, and we'll, we'll move on from here at this stage. Um, but we are also wanting to demonstrate how we're delivering a trustworthy system that is comprehensive in terms of tenure, so numerous clauses, the list of registrable rights, uh, how it's secure, so that's secure in terms of both security of tenure and secure in terms of information provision and information security. And then efficient, how we've actually built up logical processes that enable uh, efficient transactional change to occur uh, and likewise then that it's future proof that you're actually embracing the fact that land registers aren't static entities they change over time to reflect social need so there needs to be flexibility and compatibility in mind to deal with that um, it's then kind of talks around you know different types of, of register be it deeds register or title register or hybrid um, which we, we won't get kind of bogged down into but you know i've done presentations on these in the past and you can find them online um, but we're also looking at producing comprehensive tenure and that comprehensive tenure reflects this evolving social need tenure itself describes which parties can own and have other rights in a movable property so it's that relationships between party and land and as 
FAO describe, land tenure is that relationship, whether legally or customarily defined, among people as individuals or groups with respect to land. So it's really grounding it in that party right land relationship. But security of tenure reflects the jurisdiction's ability to project sorry, to protect those any legitimately held rights. So you're dealing with disputes and complaints around any of those relationships about tenure. So in most jurisdictions, that tenure is formalised within uh, legislation. However, you can look at things like kind of uh, community or communal uh, rights, where it's actually given social legitimacy through the social grouping itself. But in this instance, we're looking at kind of formal tenure through the legislation. And two principal elements are the Register of Title Act 1964 for uh, Republic of Ireland, mainly in Section 8, and the Land Registration Act 1970 for Northern Ireland, mainly Section 10. And those describe the kind of principal rights uh, which are of utility to those um, jurisdictions. Summarised as freehold, leasehold, incorporal, incorporal hereditaments held in gross, so kind of hunt and shoot and fishing type stuff, mines and minerals and charges, each of uh, you know, mines and minerals as express grants as well, charges, mortgages, liens. So, in terms of ownership tenure, we've got this kind of freeholds, the land, the full ownership for which it is an estate in fee simple, so that fee simple is still held. But that full ownership is limited in terms of the jurisdictional restrictions and any registered incumbents. So basically the jurisdiction is retaining powers to have rights over that land, which you can change over time. So it can change the way you put building restrictions on your land or allows you to pollute or not pollute. Uh, and also third parties could have rights over your land which become encumbrances to you as a landowner so it might be a right of access for example or other form of easement. These freeholds can be held over horizontal, vertical or other parts of land as described by section 3 uh, of uh, Republic of Ireland. In Northern Ireland it does describe strata and sub substrata but the legal implications of the discrete 3D volumes are not discussed further and that's quite important in terms of how you deal with apartments and any kind of positive obligations associated uh, with apartments. So as it currently stands it means apartments and flats are held as leasehold rather than as, as freehold. Although the 2013 review of the, the law of apartments by the Northern Ireland Law Commission indicates that you know, reform in this area may well be needed. So that would bring it in line with kind of a common hold concept in England or any of the other kind of proper ownership rights held in, in the rest of kind of continental Europe. We'd need to look at building up cadastral unit numbering systems that would be required to manage kind of parent plots, child plots and other forms of relevant subdivisions for land and I talk about that kind of in a, a few decks later on which I won't show in this presentation about this relationship between kind of real estate complexes and numbering systems. Uh, there's leasehold, uh, there's two slightly different interpretations of, of lease and long lease depending on the jurisdiction so in the Republic of Ireland a lease means any contract of tenancy and includes an agreement for a lease uh, based upon the wording in section 3 uh, and in um, the definition for Northern Ireland says as a noun means an instrument creating a tenancy and his verb means the granting of a tenancy by an instrument. So. But the general assumption is that all holders of freeholders, uh, all, sorry, all holders of the freehold right can grant a lease, uh, and potentially holders of the leasehold rights can grant a sub or under lease. So you can see this kind of nesting of leases. So again, the terminal, sorry, the numbering system becomes important here. Uh, possession for a lease is never in perpetuity, uh, but can generally be held as either a fixed duration, so a traditional long lease, uh, or for variable duration as a tenant for life. And those are described as section 27 and section 12, respectively, between uh, Republic and Northern Ireland. Uh, although these may have been repealed, I've not kind of gone through every branch of these, but I have a feeling these have been repealed. Uh, and again, a leasehold numbering system will need to be brought into place. Uh, there's also incorporal hereditaments held in gross, and that would require an express grant, but these are like to kind of cover hunting, shooting, and fishing rights. So you're seeing section 8 of, of the Republic and section 10 in Northern Ireland. There's also mines and minerals, as described in section 73 and section 11, again, respectively, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And then charges, so mortgages, liens, other forms of security. But critically, a charge can be owned and have its own title certificate. So that means the holder of a charge has powers to transfer, vary and discharge that right.
state and you can see those wrapped up in section 64 and section 79 in each of those elements respectively and just to show that this graph goes through here we are there's section 64 so let's get back to our slide deck but there's also the relationships that are articulated between uh, ownership and title um, and so the set of ownership rights themselves are used to generate titles and any associated certificates and evidential bits that comes from them. And the terminology used in, in both the bits of legislation is important. In Northern Ireland, uh, section 79.1 says that the land registry rules should provide for the preparation and issue of certificates of title in relation to the ownership of registered land. And so you're seeing here that separation of ownership and title is separate concepts but with a relationship between them. So this allows us to start to build up the rules between an held ownership right and then the encumbrances and benefits surrounding that ownership right which lead on to how the title is created and likewise for the Republic of Ireland on registration of a person as owner of land the registrar shall deliver to him a certificate in, in the prescribed form in this act referred to as a land certificate of his title to the land so you're seeing again that differentiation between the concept of an owner of land and then the title um, that represents that ownership and here you're seeing again the benefits and encumbrances that, that ownership has uh, are will be encapsulated in that title certificate. Both jurisdictions have different classes of title seen in section 33 and section 13 respectively so you can have an absolute title so that's something that is you know as good as it gets in terms of ownership you have your ownership you can do what you want with it it could be qualified so that's demonstrating this uncertainty around the real provenance of what you've got um, so you can't necessarily demonstrate a clean good root of title and then possessor, possessory which means there's even more uncertainty than a qualified title now essentially if you have something under uh, uh, you hold something peacefully for a, a period of years then that you know your possessory right could turn to a qualified right and your qualified right to an absolute right so it very much depends upon who else is challenging in terms of the legitimacy of the right that you hold and so the registrar has the power to upgrade the title classification, uh, sorry, the title class on submission of evidence or on discretion. That discretion, again, is going to be time bound. Uh, parties can hold their ownership rights either exclusively or as joint tenants, section 91, uh, section 55, between Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And that's where you're looking at things like marriage, where you get multiple parties joining together who are e essentially act as an individual right holder. Uh, so this is kind of form of trust in many respects or tenants in common say section 91 section 55 again so that's where multiple parties can have different shares of the ownership and can transact on those shares independently um, so tenants in common numerous clauses um, represents the list of registrable rights and you know proof of concept I've demonstrated has a no rights about registration approach and so you're creating this explicit list of registrable rights and rights will be added or removed from numerous clauses as land registry evolves to reflect social need over time so you know, you're essentially seeing that kind of mutability uh, of right types over changes uh, uh, sorry right types over time as they go in and out of favor or go in and out of having social relevance so in terms of ownership as we said you've got freehold possession corporal hediments held in gross mines and minerals and charges um, and then there's a list of approved burdens and encumbrances so that's servitudes easements covenants and there's a list of those cross-referenced in these hyperlinks here now once you have those approved burdens you end up having this rights reciprocity where you have benefiting beneficial or encumbering rights relationships between the right holder and the tenure owner and you know, I've got things that demonstrate that later on. So, but for example, where you have, say, an easement, uh, now that easement could be granted to the neighbouring property uh, uh, as a proxy for the actual owner of that property. And so, there on different title sheets, you know, the the servient tenement uh, is encumbered by the easement right, and so it becomes uh, an encumbrance on their title certificate. While the other property, the dominant property benefits from that say right of access and so that is seen as a benefit on their title certificate and you'll see that rights reciprocity resolved on the title certificate itself 
Uh, general aim is to be efficient, and it's to be efficient because we've actually modeled these things through effectively, and so I've developed a highly efficient LADM compliant registration and transaction approach. So a right holder can undertake you know, a number of parts right and land breaks, primitive operations, as long as they have the appropriate power. So it gets into this kind of Henson approach of understanding what powers are required in order to deal with the registration process. So this, is, well, that also takes in this half Heldian approach. It's looking at, you know, you can't just have a right, that right has associated powers and instances that, that come with it. But powers allow a right holder to change their right relationship with the rights that they hold. So this includes a transfer, so the sale, gift, or other means of transferring a right to a third party. An alienation, and see this is an alienation of right, where you, you essentially have this kind of bundle of rights metaphor so if you own something you can kind of dive inside a bundle and say aha I am going to grant you an easement or a mortgage or a volume of space that you could refer to as an apartment or a flat and so this kind of rights alienation can represent ownership and non-ownership uh, and land variations this could be the subdivision of land so you, you know you're taking a parcel of land and cutting it into two parcels or consolidation thereof say of those two parcels and here's how we can see that a little bit more graphically so we have our principal land a b b c c so we're transferring uh, which is held by the man in black so here the man in black is selling 50 percent to the lady in red um or selling 100 percent to the lady in red uh, so that's a part or whole uh, transfer of party you can have an alienation of right where you're dealing with a part here someone is taking out a spatial subset of strata and then ultimately putting a transfer of party in all likelihood to transfer that to a third party or for the whole thing so here we've got a, a security uh, that's been you know taken out and granted to a third party and then a variation of land so we're looking at our subdivision and consolidation processes in terms of cookie cutting land and a general aim of this is to future proof so looking at how these changes will occur over time so this register needs to be designed in a resilient manner and allows these changes that allows changes to be incorporated without requiring root and branch transformation you know we need to recognize that change will occur and that change can be driven by policy technology people expectations or a range of factors and in terms of northern ireland in particular uh, the review of the law of apartments does give an indication at some point in the near future uh, there will be reform associated with introducing some form of either common hold or the ability to have positive obligations over apartments uh, or other forms of real estate complexes that allow you to actually have something better than a lease. Okay, uh, I think that's where I'll stop. I go into things like blockchain and UNGGIM agendas and other such stuff here. I also have other slides that go onto this in terms of uh, how I'm actually showing you know, first registration, uh, transfer of party, variation of land, alienation of rights, building up and dis yeah, and destroying real estate complexes, dealing with disputes. But that goes into kind of a lot more detail. The point here was just to show how I started to move through with the uh, legal frameworks for Northern Ireland.